floating in a chocolate moonlit sea full of magnesium and theobromine, I saw a man named Dan. Cacao is his boat. Trance music is his jam. He's the founder of Sacred Taste. Om, oh, that yummy, vibrating food of the gods. Together, we went on a journey, yes, through the land of cacao, but also up the peaks and down the valleys of life and music, energy and happiness above, below, and beyond. This is part one of that journey with a blessed, loving, healing spirit known on this planet as Dan Kosh. You started off as a... DJ, you're becoming kind of big DJ there in Australia doing trance music. So can you first talk about how, why you even wanted to join that world in the first place and why in the end you basically left it at, at your peak? Yeah, I left it at the peak. So yeah, so since a very young age, um, you know, from since about 14 years old, I really love music since a young age, but then I first got given the decks at the age 14. And I really have a strong balance between like art and science. And so the good thing about DJing is I can use these tools to be technical, but I can use it to create art. And so, you know, for me, from a young age, um, you know, making music, using music, for me, it was a very beautiful way to express myself. And, you know, I believe that everything is energy. And, you know, when you're actually playing music, uh, to a crowd, you have the chance to manipulate energy and create a moment, create an experience, uh, not only for yourself, but for everyone else who's involved. And so, you know, I found myself really enjoying being in that space, creating these moments in time where people are like, wow, like that was epic. That was who I feel so good. You know, we're creating these really beautiful moods, especially playing trance music. Like, I'm not sure if you're too familiar with trance music, but you know, trance music's a really beautiful theme. There's big highs, there's big lows, and it's just, yeah, there's a lot of emotion in trance music. And, you know, most other songs go for about three minutes, three and a half minutes, four minutes, but with trance, the songs can go for seven, eight minutes. So it's a long journey. You know, sometimes we'll play a three hour set, sometimes a five hour set. One time I played an 18 hour set. And so it's all about taking people on a journey. And for me, that was like the, that, that was for me, that was the highlight it was just creating a moment in time where everybody could feel it. Like everybody's getting shivers, you know, they're all having the same bodily reaction to the music. And then we feel, even though we're not speaking to each other, we feel like we're on a collective journey. And so I really love taking people on a journey. And with music and DJing, you basically get to tell a story. Each new song is a different chapter. And we never really know where the story is going to end or how it's going to go. But when we're in flow and it, you know, it, it goes well together, uh, all the music can create this beautiful story that you can take people on, you know, on a journey. And so, for me, I really love that. And um, you know, I really didn't see anything else that I wanted to do with my life when I was a child. Like you know, my friends where I'm from, they're in Melbourne. There's a massive club culture and party scene and so that's what all the kids were doing back then and so you know if I was going to do it why not be you know one of the best at it and so yeah basically I broke into the scene at the age of 25 and um, yeah I pretty much became one of the biggest up and coming trans DJs in Australia so pretty much all the festival circuits I was on I was on the lineups with some of the best DJs in the world any top 100 DJ that played trance music, if they came to my city, I was the one warming up for them. So uh, it was pretty epic. Um, but yeah, basically got to achieve everything I wanted to achieve in that career. Got to warm up for Above and Beyond, Cosmic Gate, Paul Oakenfold, like one of the number one DJs in the world. And then literally at the height of my career, after I achieved everything I wanted to achieve, I realized that, you know, my job here was done and that there was more for me to do uh, in this life on this planet. And, you know, basically came straight, straight back down that mountain and then, yeah, completely changed my whole lifestyle. And so one of the reasons for that was because, you know, the scenes riddled with, you know, substances, drugs, alcohol, you know, and whatnot. And so I didn't really want to be an advocate for that. And so when I basically left DJing at the heart of my career, I came straight down that mountain, deleted my identity, deleted everything. Even you just said you couldn't find any content about me. It doesn't exist. And then basically, um, yeah, became an urban gardener, started an urban gardening business and moved everything into a van, moved to Bondi Beach, which is a, you know, world renowned, famous beach. And um, yeah, really, uh, yeah, re recreated myself. Well, trans music, what I like about it too, is it usually doesn't have lyrics and, right? 
does yeah. it? And it, yeah, not, it not. feels like it takes you out of this prefrontal cortex, this thinking, language-based, rational mind, and it's almost like it shuts it off and it puts you into your body or something, and you can feel the music in your body instead of thinking about and worrying about uh, and analyzing things. Because I, I, mean, I like music with lyrics, but it's a different vibe. Uh, it's sort of a head head vibe almost for me. It, I can't ignore the words. Yeah, well, the interesting for me, like when I used to DJ, I never really used to play songs with lyrics. The only time I would play a song with lyrics is on the peak. So, you know, bring the energy down and then build it up, build it up, build it up. And then at the peak, then I drop a song with lyrics to really encapsulate that moment. Like, so we always, it's always in peaks and troughs. So it's like up down music, but it's still getting higher and higher and higher. And so the reason why I like songs without lyrics or to build the set without lyrics is because when you hear lyrics, it's just one story. One story that has been shared to everybody and you know, you're know you in that story. If you don't have the lyrics, and everybody who is, yeah, I, I agree, it gets you out of the monkey mind, drops you into your body, but then you can actually have an out-of-body experience and you can actually see things. And when you actually, um, you know, when you play music or have trance music without lyrics, then everybody can have their own unique story. They can have their own unique narrative. And that's the beautiful thing about playing trance music without lyrics is that people can have their own experience. They can tell their own story. And then once it's finally built up to a point and then we drop a song with lyrics, then we all come together and we get to celebrate whatever that story is that we're telling. Yeah, and it's almost like when we're in our, what you're calling a monkey mind, we are uh, focused on ourselves and our separation from the rest of everything. And it's almost like this me versus the world this fight or flight kind of energy going on in a way, this competitiveness. Yep. And when you drop into your body and you take away the words and all these things that, that trans music gives you, it almost shows you this wider reality. I'm, I'm gonna call it reality because I think that's more real, where we are connected with each other and with nature and with probably a lot more. I mean, it's probably time is very different than the way we perceive it. And I guess, is that how you're feeling about this too? Hundred percent. Yeah, I totally agree. I feel like you know, time is time is a is a construct, and we can bend and stretch time. You know, depending on our perception. You know, in those moments in time, you know, a song could feel like like an like an eternity, or it could be like over so quickly. You know, and it really depends on the experience of the individual. And so, yeah, these are all different versions of reality that we can experience and that's what I love about when you know when I was playing music we would all be there together on a collective journey like when you play trance music or there's a trance event you know if people listening to R&B or hip-hop they get into their bodies and they dance with each other you know what I mean it's in groups uh, when you play trance music everybody is facing the DJ everybody is in their own world and then you get to have a unique experience we're all facing the same direction we're all going to the same destination but we're still journeying together. So it's an individual and a collective journey. And, you know, time can be bent and walked, you know, in, the, in those spaces. So it's really beautiful. At a typical party, people drink alcohol. What kinds of, maybe you don't want to say, what kinds of substances <laughs> do people tend to consume at these, these parties that you were doing back in your DJ days? Yeah, so back in the day, especially, you know, in Australia, they were consuming all different types of substances. So, you know, cocaine, MDMA, um, you know, speed, many, many different things back then. And, you know, those things would also help us drop into the present moment to get outside of our mind to release endorphins, oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, you know, all the chemicals that make us feel good, these substances would release. But, you know, also, and that helps impact and enhance the experience, but also you have to pay that back, you know what I mean? So the next day you, you're down and, you know, you might have a come down, as what they call it, a come down. But that's because we've borrowed happiness from tomorrow or the next day and we've stacked it into one day. And so for me, like those, those, those times were fun and explorative and, you know, fundamental, um, you know, for me to explore and, and uh, I guess, um, you know, change my own reality and, you know, change my own perception of things. But now, you know, we found a way with our business and with our cacao brand to 
to create those same highs without any come down, without any negative side effects. In fact, only positive side effects. And so, you know, that this is one of the reasons why I decided to leave um, because over time, doing it in short bursts and not so regularly is it for me is okay everything in moderation but because i was djing I was, every single week me myself or my friends would come and it was a lot of fun but yeah it was also very taxing on the body very taxing on the mind very taxing on the spirit and so i'm glad i got to achieve everything i got to achieve within my career before you know coming down that mountain that way i didn't leave anything left nothing was left on the table and I was done with that and then pretty much exited that scene and then pursued a more holistic lifestyle, which I'm much more happier to promote nowadays. And I feel like the connection that we create in our events right now is, is far more solid and more stronger and, and rooted in nature uh, than, than it was before. It sounds like, like the energy, the energy you're getting from those events with consuming those substances that you were talking about, it gave you this sort of high, but and they were almost like cheat codes or something in a way where in the end you had to pay back that debt and it wasn't like a like humans have discovered and invented all these ways to feel dopamine and serotonin and all these things that in nature if we were animals we would have to really work for and find and we wouldn't just be able to feel really happy for just by popping a pill or something and now we can but reality is is we're animals part of nature and we have to it almost like we to, it snaps us back to our to where we started or before uh and i guess there are some substances and some behaviors that have a smoother ride and it's more like connected to how reality actually is i think it's a difference between you know like synthetic drugs and plant medicine so, you know, for us, cacao is a sacred plant medicine and plant medicine has the ability to unlock all those things and to connect you into your heart, drop you out of your mind, make you feel good, make you feel connected to everything. And then you've got like synthetic substances and those synthetics, like, like you said, they're like a, a cheat code, um, you know, and so when you have those substances, yeah, you can still, you know, achieve those those heights and you can achieve those levels and those heightened states of consciousness. But unfortunately, you do got to pay it back. And so there's one that is kind of like, um, you know, a short term solution. And there's one that is like a long term solution. And for me, you know, when I'm in nature and, you know, I've taken a few days off from being in the city um, then I feel connected to everything. I feel at peace. I feel in harmony. My dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins, all those chemicals are being produced. But in a highly stressful environment, like how our society is kind of positioned today, you know, we're running on full tilt and we don't have a chance to drop into the present moment. We're always thinking about the future. And if we're always thinking about the future and preparing for what's to come, we're never really present in this moment and therefore you know we're never really happy because I think that when we live in our past you know sometimes we can be sad or you know about the past when we live in the future there's anxiety like you know either there's fear of what's to come or maybe even excitement of things to come which can be a positive thing but the only time that we can ever really be happy is when we're in the present and so anything that takes us out of the present moment um, you know is not necessarily going to be conductive to you know, creating more happiness, but in the present moment, that's when we can truly be happy. And that's how, that's what I really feel that these substances often do, you know, whether they're synthetic substances or not, you know, when you like, even on alcohol, you're not thinking about tomorrow, you know what I mean? You're kind of like present, having a good time. Uh, and it's the same thing with other substances. And so it is like a, a shortcut or a bypass um, to get present, but then you wake up tomorrow and your problems are still there, the anxiety is still there. And that's where I feel plant medicine can really help create more of an alignment and a more of a harmony between the two. Yeah, and I wanna get into cacao and all these other plant medicines. Uh, but first you mentioned alcohol, and alcohol still is uh, one of the most popular drugs, if not the most popular drug, and aside from caffeine, perhaps. And what are your thoughts on alcohol? How does alcohol affect the brain? Why? Why is it so popular? And how does it, in terms of energy, these uh, vibrations or frequencies that you talk about, how, how does it fit into there? 
Yeah, beautiful. Like for me, and this is just, you know, my perspective, my opinion, my experience. Like for me, I feel like alcohol is so popular, one, because it's been made legal. So you can actually go and buy it and consume it. Um, but also because, again, it does drop you out of the out of the mind and makes you like, you know, present, but also you're also not present at the same time. And so I feel like, you know, and you said you said caffeine as well. So I may as well talk about both. The two main drinks that society drinks is caffeine during the week to get you through the week and then alcohol to get you through the weekend. Because most people are living a nine to five life and they wake up and they actually don't enjoy the life that they're living or the job that they're doing. So they need some sort of extra energy or stimulant to help them get them through the day because their purpose is not actually driving them. And that's not the case for everybody. Some people are on purpose and still have coffee to enhance their experience. But, you know, the general consensus is, all right, it's nine to five, Monday to Friday, you have your coffee. And then on the weekend, it's like alcohol and that's it. And I feel like the reason why people have alcohol, again, this is just my opinion my experience is that when it comes to the weekend people want to go out and they want to connect and they want to forget about the week that just happened they want to forget about the week that's coming and so they want to be present on the weekend and so they'll have alcohol but another reason is also uh, because we go out to have connection and to create connections but sometimes we have these barriers in these walls um, that prevent us from actually making these connections maybe we're not confident enough maybe we're not living the life that we truly feel like we deserve and so therefore we have alcohol which reduces our inhibitions brings down our walls and then we have no fear to connect and the unfortunate thing is you know alcohol is one of the, the legalized substances and um and yeah it is probably one of the most detrimental and most dangerous you know on the body it, it makes us behave in terrible ways do silly things and it's far more dangerous than some of the other plant medicines that are out there and in, in fact it actually has no in my opinion no actual benefit you know on the body or on the mind or on the spirit and uh, but all it does is again it just it is a form of escaping your current reality and enjoying the present moment so you can just forget about it and just enjoy it and then come back to your reality and so you know not only is it culturally accepted it's actually celebrated you know it's it's like a given that you would have alcohol at a celebration or a party which again if that reduces your consciousness for a special occasion like a wedding or a birthday or something wouldn't you want to be even more conscious and more present and create better connections so you can remember these moments remember these conversations but unfortunately that's not actually not what's culturally celebrated and so for us you know when we do ceremony or something like that we're actually more conscious of what we're consuming and what we're having and then from that perspective, we actually get to enhance the experience, create better memories, create deeper connections. And those connections are more long lasting with the things that we do with cacao or other plant medicine. It's kind of sad in a way, because we're all just trying to connect and be happy. And it's like people don't know any better or something. They just think, oh, alcohol, I heard it's going to help me. And this is what is going to make it make me feel better. And they're not doing it to try to harm themselves. They just don't they, maybe they don't know about cacao or some of these other things. So how is cacao different from alcohol and caffeine? It's very different. It's a whole different beast, but yeah. Yeah, completely different beast. And so in regards to caffeine, so obviously coffee has caffeine, which produces cortisol, which is the fear chemical. It's actually your stress hormone. And so it stimulates your fight or flight frequency. And so caffeine can give you a ton of energy. But it's all about adrenaline. It's fear-based, you know, energy where you're like, oh my God, I've got to get things done or I'm afraid or whatever. And the thing is, so cacao actually has theobromine, which on a molecular level is very similar to caffeine, but it actually releases oxytocin, serotonin, dopamine, endorphins, so all the chemicals that make us feel good. That's what cacao releases. And so on one hand, you've got caffeine, you know, which is a, a beautiful tool to use because it does give you a ton of energy, makes you sharp, makes you focus. But also at the end of it, you have a very big crash. And again, your nervous system is a bit shot and you're a bit dehydrated. Whereas with cacao, you know, it actually opens up your heart, pumps blood all around your body and releases all the chemicals that make you feel good. But then also has like super high in magnesium, which relaxes your nervous system. So you're more calm. You're releasing more endorphins, all the feel good chemicals. You're pumping more oxygen around your body. So you have more energy and then you have focus from a love based paradigm rather than a fear based paradigm. And so that's the main for me, the main difference between cacao and coffee. 
But in terms of alcohol, you know, similar things. So alcohol is considered a depressant, a depressant. So when you have it, it reduces your inhibitions. When you have cacao, it actually raises your awareness. You become aware of more things. You aren't, you know, you can see things more clearly. You're more present, and you're more conscious of of everything that's happening. And so, you know, when we go to a, an alcohol fueled party, people are getting messy. They get sloppy. They go home. They can't even drive. With cacao, you know, it actually raises your vibration, makes you feel happy, makes you feel good, makes you more alert. And any conversations that you know you have. Especially with other people who are on cacao as well, you know, we can actually go to a deeper level and actually have much more profound conversations, connection, and experience. And that's what we found with our cacao parties. Like I remember the first cacao party that we held ourselves. I remember getting off the decks. I was playing trance music as well, so everyone was really elevated. Got off the decks, and then the first like three people stopped me on the way on the way out, and they were like, "Man, I had the best time." I、had the best conversations, and I feel so good. All three people said the exact same three things in that order, and I was like, "Whoa!、I、had the best time, had the best conversations, and I feel so good." This is what we're chasing when we go out to meet people, when we go out to have a good time, is to have a good time, have the best conversations, and to also feel good. And that's how I feel like cacao is different, right? Because even if alcohol shuts off that thinking part of our mind. It doesn't really connect us. It might for ten minutes or fifteen minutes or something, but in the end, it keeps us disconnected. And it, as it increases things like dopamine and cortisol and adrenaline, and it narrows our focus into、uh, a small field of view almost. And I think I feel like caffeine does the same. It's increasing adrenaline and dopamine and cortisol, and it's narrowing your focus on a goal,、uh, striving to. Get things, and also to learn things, to to collect data from the world. Correct. Yeah. But it's not this zoomed out openness, and it's almost like it's interesting because you're talking about how it affects your our, our blood vessels and our blood flow. It, literally, with the NO2, the nitric oxide that it increases from the theobromine, that opens up our blood vessels and it opens up our heart, and the blood starts flowing. And it's almost like on this micro level, we're opening up, but also. Through our perception, through our vision, and most like this weird energy fields that we're throwing off to each other, that all opens up, and we have this more connected vibe on on every level. Yeah, and and this is what the ancients, you know, revered. This is what they used to do. Like, you know, for those that don't know, like cacao is a is a sacred plant medicine. It's actually the raw form of chocolate, and in its raw form, it's not a confectionery item. It's actually a nutrient dense superfood. And the ancient Mayans, you know, they used to revere this so well. That's why we call it sacred. And they would actually sit in ceremony and they would use this medicine to connect with the divine. So this actual the cacao actually comes from the theobroma cacao tree, and again, it's got theobromine in it. And theo and broma literally translates to food of the gods, theo and broma. And so this is actually, you know, for the food of the gods. And when you have this, you are not only are you connecting to yourself or able to connect to other people. You're also connecting to the divine and to everything, and that is the true connection that we all seek. Like I feel like we're all here, you know, in our own little vessel, but we've all come from, you know, universal consciousness. We've all come from one source from somewhere, whether it be the Big Bang or whatever the case may be, stardust, etc. But we are all here in one point in time, concentrated into this vessel, you know, vibrating in this body, in this vessel. And we feel like we're separate because we have these five senses that we can, you know, taste, touch, smell. See, etc., and we all want to experience that connection and that oneness. And you know, that's why we have these alcohols. Why we have substances is we want to feel connected. We want to feel one. But I really do feel that cacao is the the vessel and the vehicle and the medicine that can actually really help you achieve that. But not only achieve that in the short term because it's like a shortcut, but also in the long term because, like I said, with cacao, you're not borrowing happiness from tomorrow. You're actually building happiness with cacao, and that's the beautiful thing. When you work with cacao and you work with it on a regular basis,、um, yeah, you will feel more connected to yourself, to your passions, to your purpose, to other people, to each other. And provided that there's other people in your world that can you can experience it with, then you'll actually get more value out of it. You know, unfortunately, when I first started, I was I was the one that quit. I quit DJing, quit the drugs, quit the alcohol. 
and I would go to some of my parties here in Melbourne or to some of my friends getaways or gatherings or whatever and they'd be all drinking alcohol and they'd be like do you want alcohol I'm like nah I'm gonna have cacao and I'll be there making cacao and I'll be drinking it right everyone else like for a whole weekend the way I remember this one everyone would get drunk the next day I, I would wake up I'd be the first one up I'd go for a run go for a swim I'd have like two three hours in the morning and then I come back everyone else is waking up there feeling groggy I'm feeling amazing and then I reckon about maybe 20% of the crowd that was there for that weekend that next night they were oh, all right we're gonna drink again some people were like yeah 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 and then a few people were like looking at me looking at how good I was feeling and they're like actually I'm gonna have cacao tonight and then like 20% of the crew would have cacao with me while the rest drank and then we had like this this kind of like divide where it was like the alcohol and then the drunk crew and then this the cacao crew and to be honest not that we see anything as separation like it's all welcome it's all good but the cacao people actually ended up it just gravitated this way the drunk people were like in the pool room having pool drinking and doing the usual stuff literally just talking shit talking nothing that was of any relevance or importance but then the cacao people gravitated to this other room where it was a nicer mood it was a bit more chilled and then our conversations went really deep probably some of the most deepest conversations that we had without other substances so you know that really is a testament to show like the power of cacao how it can connect you to yourself but also to others Um, and also if you have a community of people drinking it and working with it as opposed to going out and drinking alcohol um, you know you can create these really beautiful connections that you know like I said can last a lifetime so I think there's an underlying theme here that there are these energy frequencies that permeate our body all of our organs every animal every plant everything in existence almost I, I think if you can explain about this whole frequency energy thing, it might be getting into the sun and I don't know other worlds or something. I don't know how how deep this goes. Uh, so can you like kind of talk about your little philosophy on all the energy and the frequency stuff? I think it's science based, but it's also more than that. Well, I think, you know, the, the, there is like obviously a whole new science about it, you know, with quantum physics and everything, like our bodies are made up of atoms and inside those atoms, it's only like 0.005% or 0.0005% actual matter and the rest is empty space. And so in reality, we are more empty space than physical matter. And so therefore, it's the energy within that empty space that actually governs everything. And so, you know, that is on a, on, you know, on a, you know, quantum level. But for me, you know, whether it's science or not, whether it's proven or not, I just go through, go with what I believe and what I feel to be true. For instance, sometimes we'll have these conversations. You might say something and I'll get full body shivers like, whoa, and it because it resonates and that's, it resonates. So it's literally reverberating through me, resonating through me. And actually your words are changing my body and making it shiver or, or get, um, you know, what do you call it? Goosebumps or whatever. And that's the same thing with trance music. That's what and that I'm is, And that's wild. If that if that's possible, if that's possible, that's wild because we just met for the first time today and we're these uh, seemingly completely different creatures on different countries uh, doing this through the internet and we're still able to like realize this reality that we're not these separate beings. That's wild. 100%. Like how is it that, you know, if, you know, you could say something to me and I could get a full body shiver just on the words and the vibration that you've created. You've said something that my body and my brain has decoded that like, oh, that feels right and therefore resonates and therefore, you know, it gives me shivers down my whole body. And this happens many times. Like even when you walk into a room and you're like, oh, this doesn't feel good. I have a bad feeling. Where does that come from? It comes from the energy that is in the space of the room. For instance, there's a study where they've taken a, a, a like taken a rat or a, a mouse and put it into a, a container. And that first mouse, when they put it into that container, you know, it's just fine. It's chilling. It's happy. It's whatever. And then they would actually like electrocute it, you know, to the point where it's like you know really anxious. Then they would take that mouse out of that out of that cage, out of that space. And then they would bring another mouse in, a completely, you know, separated mouse. When that mouse goes into that empty space, even though there's nothing physical present, that second mouse picks up on the energy and then starts to, like, get anxious without any sort of, you know, shocks or anything like that. So there is vibration and frequency. And that's the thing. Like, it's that there's a lot of it in the things that we cannot see that actually governs and shapes, you know, our reality. And so for me... 
you know, everything in everything in nature has a vibration and a frequency. Our body and our organs operate at certain frequencies. I'm not exactly sure of the megahertz, but for instance, you know, the liver might operate at a 65 megahertz. Come on, you got to know this, man. This is basic knowledge. You got to <laughs> <laughs> okay, go I'm interrupting you. I am gonna study it. I'm gonna study it. So I know. So I know. <laughs> it's basic knowledge, man. You gotta know this. What's the number? The 24 or the 25 megahertz? <laughs> yeah, let's go. Like, we can just Google it and say, hey. Yeah, I know. I'm kidding. But I kind of figured out what you're doing. I kind of figured out your your plan or what you're doing. You're. I. I may, correct me if I'm wrong. You're finding all these sort of high vibration, high energy things. These sort of pure reality, pure God energy or something and you're kind of packaging them together to give us this like heaven on earth or something cacao trance music nature uh maybe there's something going on with the sun and the moon i don't know tell me your little recipe for happiness that you, you seem to be cooking up over there 100 <laughs> percent. and so you know like we are a product of our environment so you know, wherever we are, whether we're getting sunshine, air, food, water, music, connection, community, this is all going to uh, change our frequency. If we have a bunch of people around us who are like super sad and always focusing on the negative, their actual frequency is quite low. And so it's going to bring our frequency down. If we're around people who are hopeful, optimistic, you know, talking about their plans or even being present in the moment, that's going to change our frequency. If we have food, that is like low frequency food. It's gonna it's gonna pull down our mood. It's gonna make us sick. If we have high frequency food, it's gonna increase our frequency. And when you understand that that everything is vibration and frequency, and then you are the conductor of your environment. Like that's what I said. Like when I wanted to quit DJing and quit, you know, the the scene in terms of its toxicity, I had to physically change my environment. If I was to stay in Melbourne, it was so easy for me to slip back into old habits, back into old thoughts, back into old actions. So I literally removed myself from that environment, literally like completely erased my identity, moved to Bondi and actually stay, like lived in a van on a beach for six years where every day I did things differently. Walking barefoot on the, on the earth, swimming every morning, watching the sunrise, watching the sunset, no TV, no four walls and just living in nature. And that really lifted my vibration, lifted my frequency. And a lot of, you know, quote unquote, negative stuff was happening to me. I lost my house, lost my job. Like I, like I said, I erased my identity, lost so many things, ended up becoming homeless. But I was held by those frequencies. I was held by the ocean, held by Mother Nature, held by the organic food that I was, that I was eating. And I managed to actually get through it but not only get through it i was actually like happier in the process of losing all of those things i was not attached to those things and so to answer your question because you're starting to see what you're starting to understand what i'm doing yeah man we're using the vibration of cacao as the substance in a setting where we when you come to our parties it's in nature it's under the full moon which is also like it's illumination it's like all light the whole place is lit and um, and yeah, we get we're in nature. We have a fire. We use the elements: earth, water, air. And um, and then yeah, we actually use high vibrational music and and prayer and intention and yeah, and we we go really deep and we create these really beautiful, amazing experiences. But just so you know, we're also not just here to just you know be on the high highs. We're also we also have new moon ceremonies where we take people into the darkness because. The new moon is when the moon is is dark, and in that, using the energy of the moon, we actually go do new moon ceremonies. Twenty people max, no more, and then we sit. We'll have cacao. We'll do a sound journey, and then we'll actually take people through a guided meditation, where we can navigate them into the darkest parts that they're trying to avoid and actually clear that out. Because just like in a hot air balloon, if you're in a hot air balloon, you can pump the gas and like bring the heat and try and go up, or you can just release the weight that's holding you back and you can float up naturally. And so I feel like we try and create a balance of both, you know, the light and the dark, the yin and the yang, the full moon celebration and then the new moon, you know, um, introspective journey, meditation. Uh, you know, we do both of those things. So I also believe not just like focusing all on the highs, but also, you know, giving the lows some attention too, and then having a beautiful balance of, of both. Right, because nature moves through highs and lows. I mean, we have seasons, we have winter and summer, and we have night and day, and there's this circadian rhythms that when we sleep and when we, uh, during the day, we hunt and gather and have fun with friends. So it's like you're tapping, you're trying to tap into not only 
uh, these highs, but the overall syncing yourself up with the cycles of nature. Is that what's going on? 100 percent. That's exactly what we're doing, man. For me. To observe my reality, I believe the only thing that we can like. Oh, we were talking about energy before and the things we cannot see. So people believe in God, spirit, you know, whatever, whatever forces you feel. If you, sometimes you feel there may not be any force, like any invisible force that is like you know, intelligent force that is creating everything. That's totally fine. But for me, if you look at the tangible things that we can see and we view nature, everything in nature is in balance. So night, day, you know, like you said, winter, summer. You know, so if we look at nature, there is a universal law of balance, and for us, it's not just about oh, let's focus all on the highs and you know, positivity, positivity, positivity. It's like no, it's like let's give the lows some attention, and what we do is yeah, we use the cycles of the moon because the moon actually governs all the waters of planet Earth. So the deepest oceans, it can like rise and it can lower a, t- a whole tide. And our bodies is made up of 70% water. So can you imagine what it's doing to the waters of our body? And water retains memory; it stores it in the cells. And so when we use the power of the moon, we can actually like bring things up and call things in, but we can also let things go and release them. And that's the beautiful thing about the moon. And hence, if you think about it, if you think about you know, for example, women when they're on their on their moon cycle, they call it a moon cycle for a reason because often it is in sync. If they are in sync with the rhythms of nature, their moon cycle will be in sync with the moon, and so that's a pretty tangible kind of like you know evidence to validate. Okay, cool, we are in sync with nature when we are in nature, and if we follow the rhythms, the ebbs and flows of nature, the ups and the downs, we can go through a period of massive release, massive celebration. Or we can go through a period of sadness and darkness, and that is all natural. The only thing that creates disharmony for me is our interpretation and our perspective of what's happening when it's happening. Oh my gosh, I love the highs, I love the highs, but then when it goes into the dark phase of people's life, oh my god, no, this is the worst thing. I don't want this to happen. But what if we, what if we flip that? What if like, oh my gosh, the highs, this is amazing. Oh my gosh, I'm going into the darkness, amazing. What am I gonna learn? What am I gonna let go of? What's gonna come up that's holding me back? What is one of those weights I can let go from my hot air balloon, so that when I do come back into the light, it's like a brighter summer. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude, this is crazy because this is the whole reason why I started this podcast too. Is that same thing, and somehow that me learning about this stuff and. Uh, consuming substances like cacao and getting my sleep in check and getting the morning sunlight and getting all these things somehow not only gave me that energy that allowed me to be happier, but it also like drew me to other creatures like you who were also tapped into <laughs> that. And you were talking about how at the uh, you're a creature, that's what you are. No, I'm a creature, man. I'm absolutely. No, um, and you were talking about you're yeah, you're not you're beyond a creature. It's like we have these apparent bodies I, I think the only way anyone's gonna understand all this is we have to get beyond this visual thing that apparent little fingers and eyes and ears we have and and almost like imagine it's hard to imagine what it really is but almost like swirling colors or something just all in one big piece or something and we, it, it seems like we are separate beings and that everything is separate but it's not and or maybe it is but if you can at least imagine I think it's beyond imagining because I think it's reality that we are this one swirling mess of energy and like you were saying there's these gaps between the atoms and all that and we're like whatever we see is like a small small sliver of what we are 100% and once we can sort of realize that then, then everything starts to make sense and we can start to redirect our lives in positive ways and think oh, okay well get over this whole uh, apparent separateness and just tap into that one positive there's different frequencies of energy and some things have this high energy some things have this low energy and we just tap into that and forget about all these little uh appearances absolutely man absolutely like i thought i keep saying like we are all different hues of the same human being so we're all different shades of the same human being we are all human beings you know whether you are light skin dark skin whatever the outside is not reflective of what's on the inside and what's on the inside every single human being 
share the same experiences. We share the same emotions. We have happiness. We have sadness. We have guilt. We have remorse. We can all share these same energies. Can you tell me the physical appearance of anger, of this, of that? No, we cannot unless it manifests in the body and someone's actually angry. But we all experience these same energies that flow through our body and allow us to in, to act in a certain way. If we're sad, we're going to be, you know, low. We're going to cry. We're going to whatever. If we're angry, we're going to be, you know, we're going to have a different, you know, physical uh, reaction on the body. And so we are all one. We are all connected. And the only thing that separates us is our belief that we are separated, or even our perception of that separation. For instance, like you wouldn't go off and just like cut off your arm. You know what I mean? Because you know that your arm is connected to your body. So you're like, no, this is me. So I'm not going to cut off my arm. But if we can tap into a state where we feel connected to the planet, we feel connected to each other. How will, how, or how could we, or why would we cause harm, harm to something else that we're connected to? You know, it's like in the movie Avatar. You know how they connect to the, to the, the to the tree to Awa, and then they fully connect and they're going to protect her because they are connected to her. The only time that you're going to damage something is when you're not connected either to yourself or connected to that thing that you're that you're causing harm to. And that's what I feel is like, you know, the biggest issue in society today is we've lost that connection. We've lost that connection to ourselves, to each other, to mother nature, to the planet, to our purpose. And when we're not connected to our bodies, we're going to we're going to pollute it. When we're not connected to mother nature, we're going to destroy it. But when we're connected all together, we don't need to teach people how to take care of your body. You know, we don't need to teach keep it people how to take care of the planet. You know, because you can feel when you eat something that's not good for you, like ah, this doesn't feel good. Okay, then don't do it. Or you know, if you damage the environment, you're like, oh, I probably caused harm there, and you know, you wouldn't do it. But when we create that connection and we're all connected. Yeah, that's where all the information can be exchanged, and we are connected to everything, and that's where all the answers are for me. And normally, when we hear the word connection, we think about human connection, and we sort of stop there. Maybe we include dogs or cats or something. But it sounds like what you're doing, and what you and what you were seeking also, because you were in Australia doing your DJ thing, you felt this sort of highs of success and status, and all the other. Yeah. You had all the neurochemicals of of happiness, but. You sort of left all that because it was limited in some way, and you went off to India. And so, what、uh, what kind of drew you to India? What called you to India? And what did you learn? How did you learn and experience more about this during those? I didn't know it was six years you were there. Yeah. No, no, no. I was went. I went to Bondi. So Bondi is a beach in Australia. So that's actually a, that's where、uh, I went. Bondi, not Bombay. Not Bombay. No, I went to Bondi. Yeah, I went to Bondi, which is a it's like a very well well renowned beach in Australia. I would have loved to have gone to India and spent some time there. I'm actually going to India this year, actually, which is I'm very excited about. We're actually going over over there to do some ceremonies in India and in Nepal,、uh, which should be really nice. But for me, like, what compelled me to go to Bondi is like you know, it's two driving forces. One. My thirst and desire to be in a healthy environment with sunshine, better weather, the ocean, Mother Nature, people who are living the same life that I would like to live, eating organic food, taking care of their body, etc., etc. But the second driving force was, you know, all the not so positive things that were actually happening to me, and that's what I believe. There are actually two driving forces in the human experience. There's actually people moving towards pleasure and moving away from pain, and so. I wanted to go to Bondi and change my environment, so I had enough pleasure there. But simultaneously, I was having a lot of pain from being at home. You know, the drug addiction and the environment, the toxicity was never any good. But simultaneously, like I said, I lost a job that I was working in. They owed me thirty grand worth of income, and they didn't pay, so I lost thirty grand. I lost the house that I was building, and then I basically moved to Bondi and I lived out of a van that I legally couldn't drive because I also lost my license. And I was basically homeless on a beach in Bondi with 200 bucks cash, and I was literally stripped away of everything. But all I had was the sun, the sea, the earth, and my breath. And I just sat there and I just recreated myself from the ground up. I let everything strip away from me, all of our thoughts of what you know you would think an identity was. And I then I completely recreated myself in my own version of how I would want myself to be. And that's the thing. Like, if you think about it, who are we? If I ask you, what is your personality? 
at the end of the day, we are just a collection of ideas that we have gathered, some internally and some externally, that we have forged together to say, hey, this is who I am, this is my identity, this is me. But that's actually not reality. Who you are is actually a spiritual being inside a human body having this experience. You can completely change your personality, your identity in a heartbeat. That's why I had no issues erasing my identity. And so that is the reality of who we are. And then from that place, we can change our personality and we can change our identity daily if we wish. Or we can create a healthy identity, a healthy relationship with who we really are. But that really has to come from a place of within not from, oh, this person expects me to be this, this person expects me to that, society wants me to be this. No, live life on your terms. This is your life. This is your experience. You are this spiritual being in this vessel for, you know, 80 to 100 years. So you choose what you want to do. You choose where you want to be and you create your experience. And if you can't make those changes, like if you're in, you know, uh, you know basically if you have less opportunities, then we are obviously we are very blessed. I am very blessed, so I have more options and opportunities but if you don't have those options or opportunities you also have a choice to come to peace with your reality accept your reality and then also not and then change the reality and focus all your attention on changing that reality because that's what I feel like some people are really unhappy with their lives but what is happiness happiness is when the external world matches your expectations of how the world should be and you can, if, it's not, if you're not happy, that's because the external world doesn't match that. And you have two choices. You can either change the external world to match how you want it to be, or you change your expectation to match how it is. And either way, you'll find happiness. Stay tuned with all those beautiful, huggable, vibrating, godlike frequencies floating through you and everything. And also to this podcast because this conversation with Dan is just getting started. In the next episode, we will continue it. And in the meantime, why don't we all grab some cacao? That's what I just did. I went to sacredtaste.com and ordered five buckets of it. Five buckets? That's not safe for one person to drink, especially in one sitting. And obviously, I'm not planning on drinking it all in one time. I, I was hoping you guys would come on over here and have a cacao party with me. But if not, I'll just let it transport me into a state of bliss from now until eternity. I'm trembling with excitement and a little bit of fear for the rose petal one. Yeah, one of them is sprinkled with rose petals. How divine is that? I'm a bit afraid it's going to explode me into nirvana or back into stardust or towards another dimension or something. So why don't we all sit around and hold hands and drink it together, at least for the first time? That sounds like a much safer and happy journey. Won't you do that? Won't you join me on that journey, my friends? Please, pretty, pretty, please. Dan's going to be there. My mom and brother and everyone we've all ever loved will be too. Connecting you back up with everyone, everything, and yourself. That's what cacao can do.